Today we're driving the 2022 Audi SQ7. I've never been behind the wheel of one of these before. We have a four liter twin turbocharged V8 that makes 500 horsepower, 568 pound feet of torque, and eight speed automatic transmission. Of course, Quattro all wheel drive is standard. Starting price on this is about $89,000. This has a few options, the prestige package, a couple others that we'll put in the description. Total price on this is a little over 103 grand. So pretty nice looking sporty SUV. We've driven a lot of vehicles in this class lately. This has three rows. So this is more competitive with the BMW X7. I really like what Audi's doing with their interiors these days from their infotainment to their gauges, to the materials. Let's walk you around this SQ7, show you what it looks like inside and out and then we'll take it for a drive and talk about how it is on the road. On the outside, I've never found the SQ7 or the Q7 to be particularly attractive. Kind of looks like a big fat wagon, but I guess in this latest version, they've smoothed out some of the lines. The taillights look pretty nice. Pretty big 21 inch wheels with Pirelli all season Scorpion Zero tires. As you can see, it's winter, it's snowing, it's chilly out. Front end of the SQ7 looks pretty nice. Grill isn't too garish and obscene. Let's see what type of storage we have back here. Pretty good amount of space behind the second row. Let's bring up this third row. Looks like we gotta hold the buttons. Not a ton of room back there, but usable in a pinch. Two buttons on the hatch to lower the tailgate and lock the vehicle. Second row has a lot of adjustment with the backrest angle. I'm pretty comfortable back here, five foot 10. You've got rear climate control, a couple of vents massive panoramic moonroof, nice interior lighting, nice and bright. Vents here on the side too. This does have the Bang & Olufsen 3D premium audio system, which is a $5,000 option. We'll test that out here in a little bit. Center armrest with a cup holder. Let's see how easy or challenging it is to get into the back of this third row here. All right, so I assume we push, and this pulls forward. Oh, that's not terrible. And then we've got buttons here to fold up or lower down the third row. E, it's tight. Not a lot of space. I assume these seats pull forward just a little bit. They adjust. You've got a slider right here. And for kids, probably be okay, but for adults, my head's touching. Don't have a lot of knee room. Let's see what this is like pulled forward. Okay, so you could squeeze an adult back here in a pinch, making it a true seven-seater. Okay, now I just gotta escape. And we can easily fold down that third row, like so, with these two buttons. Nice. Let's take a look under the hood at this twin turbo four liter V8. Sounds really nice. Gave it a little bit of a rev at idle when we started the video. Doesn't get the best fuel economy though. 15 miles to the gallon in the city, 21 MPG on the highway. Premium fuel only. Nice lightweight hood though. This is a bit of a German muscle car and it sounds the part Let's hop inside. I'll show you around the front seat a little bit, and then we'll take this out on the road. You can hear this V8. So one of my favorite things is just the way this sounds at idle. You put it into dynamic mode, especially on cold starts in the morning. It's kind of gruff and loud and rumbly. That <laughs> makes a good noise. I love that. So pretty basic Audi controls here. A lot of simplicity, a lot of physical buttons, uh, nothing too unfamiliar on the steering wheel, same cruise control stock that we've had in Audi VW products for a long time. I really like the haptic feedback that you get on these touch screens. Yes, we have touch screens for our climate control, but it's pretty well laid out, easy to change to manual mode. 
you can just press auto and everything works fine there. We have wireless CarPlay. There's a little bit of lag and delay with the touchscreen, but there's this very satisfying haptic feedback with everything when you touch it. CarPlay immediately gets a little bit quicker and more responsive than the standard uh, infotainment system. You've got a bunch of vehicle settings and menus here for your drive mode, your air suspension. This can raise and lower depending on the different drive modes. There's an all-road and an off-road mode. It should be able to get you through some higher clearance areas, and if you're driving this in the winter and there's a lot of snow, all the better to have this adjustable air suspension. That's a good amount of ground clearance right there. It's slammed in dynamic mode, it lowers that center of gravity substantially. You also get an individual mode that you can customize. I have mine set to sport drive, comfortable suspension and steering, and the loudest exhaust mode, which is present. Otherwise, pretty straightforward menus. You've got a quick access button for your parking cameras and all of your driving assistance settings. You have a maximum individual and basic setting for those, and you can go in and customize everything individually if you like. Parking brakes down here. Decent looking reverse camera. Like a lot of Audis, it turns as you turn the wheel, giving you a little bit more view around those corners. Same with the front camera. Really cool feature that I've always enjoyed with Audi's vehicles. Down here in the center console, we get a wireless charging element and a couple USB-C ports, a couple cup holders. We have a heated steering wheel, very nice on a day like today with 23 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. Ventilated and heated seats, all easily controlled right there with a the press of that haptic button on the screen. All right, let's head out and take this for a drive. Steering's got a bit of weight to it. And my favorite thing about this SQ7 is just how nice that V8 sounds. We also get four wheel steering. Helps reduce understeer, gives us a tighter turning circle makes this a little bit better to drive overall dynamically. We have two modes for the transmission. This is an eight speed automatic, drive and sport. You can use the paddles, switch it into manual. It's a bit lazier of a shift program than a dual clutch, but once everything warms up, it seems to speed up nicely. Downshifts can be a little bit delayed, but overall, I think it suits the character of this SQ7. Put us into dynamic. A little bit of delay from our drive mode selections there. And you can immediately feel the suspension stiffen up. Those air springs are going to lower the vehicle. <laughs> Steering's going to wait up. Everything's going to become more responsive. I've got to say, I am really impressed with how this SQ7 handles. It just rockets out of corners. It's surprisingly quick. Super quiet at speed. Barely any wind, road noise. You can easily set cruise control, change your following distance. This also has a lane keeping aid, but I've disabled all the extra driving assistance stuff. Adaptive cruise control has a few different settings, comfort, normal, and sport. Once you get accustomed to this cruise control stock, it's pretty easy to use and to navigate. You can skip five mile an hour increments by kind of double clicking down. It seems to maintain a pretty close following distance too. You get a couple different gauge views, this two pod display, which is pretty classic for Audi. And then you can add a little bit more information in with temperatures, boost pressure, stuff like that. Steering ratio is pretty quick. 
We're still in dynamic mode. Let's hit one more entrance ramp here. We'll switch it into manual, use the paddles. Out of all the performance SUVs we've driven this year, for the size of this thing, this is one of the most impressive around a corner. Tires are holding it back a little bit today, these all seasons, and all of the salt dust on the roads doesn't make for the grippiest situation, but honestly, I'm having a lot of fun on this. It's neutral, it's adjustable at the limit. There's a little bit of safe understeer on throttle. But for a three-row SUV, this is just awesome. Really fun to drive around a corner and uh, in a straight line has a lot of performance. Should get about 21 miles to the gallon on this on the highway. Eighth gear, 75 miles an hour, sits at about 1800 RPM. Let's switch us into individual drive mode. This is gonna soften the suspension, but keep the engine in its loudest setting. feel nice. This is a surprisingly sharp front end for an Audi. Something that I've noticed since we drove the new RS6. This only weighs a few hundred pounds more than the RS6. Definitely doesn't have the cool factor, but Gosh, it is a really, really nice overall package. All right, so some thoughts on the SQ7. Great interior, pretty well priced, I think, for what you're getting. The character of this really is dominated by the sound of the V8. I just love this twin turbo four liter. It is such a good, good engine. Lots of torque, the exhaust is tuned really well. A few little burbles here and there, but for the most part, it's very refined and just kind of fun to drive around in any situation. It has some personality and I like that. It's a sound that we're not gonna get for very much longer. I really like the steering here. You can feel this four wheel steer do its job around tighter corners. And then when you're hustling this SQ7, it actually gives you a decent amount of feedback. Let's see how it is on a bit of a launch. It wants to slide a bit. That's fun. Let's go into dynamic mode. Let's do a quick zero to 60 here. three and a half seconds to 60 miles an hour. That's impressive, very impressive. All right, before we wrap things up with this video, let's go in and test out this Bang & Olufsen Advanced 3D Sound System. It's a $5,000 option. Let's see if it's worth it. We've got volume and track selection controls down here and on the steering wheel.
Short answer, I think so. This is an amazing 3D sound system. Really clear, very crisp, beautiful bass. You can hear that subwoofer in the trunk doing its job. I am very impressed. I think this is better than what BMW offers at this price point and on par, if not better than the Burmester and Mercedes products. Cool, very nice. All right guys, well I am super impressed with this SQ7. It is just a pleasure to wheel around. Really nice, refined, comfortable, enjoyable daily. The Germans do know how to do some things right. And uh, yeah, I've had fun on this this week. Too bad we haven't had any snow. I'm sure this would just be a monster in the powder, but for everything else, it does a really nice job. Very well-rounded SUV. I feel like also for the price, what you're getting, I feel like beyond this price point, you're really just getting into diminishing returns and this kind of hits a sweet spot in the market. All right, that'll be it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Your mobile device is still in the vehicle.